Hello and welcome to Assorted Meeples. I'm Philip the Meeple on Duty, and today I am doing a rules video for Small Samurai Empires. That's it. It's just the rules. Alrighty, to get playing, we're first going to get out our play mat or our boards and get them set out on the table. Spread out nice and level so all players can reach them evenly. Next thing you're going to do is everybody grabs their color. I have blue and I have green here ready to go. They get all the pieces of their color, which is 16 armies and 3 castles, plus all the order tokens and the little bits and bobs that go on the trackers on the side. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our uh, bits and bobs here and we're playing. So you're going to put one on the scoreboard and then each influence track gets its own one. We're not playing with the expansion or going over any of that. So we don't need it up there. And again, we're going to do this with green as well. There we go. Those are all set up. Now we're also going to take in at each capital city here. We're going to put two, two armies of each color right in here. Now that is done. Next we're going to figure out, we're going to take six of the grain. And six of the Bushido. We're going to mix them up in hand. And then we're going to draw a blind. And we're going to randomly seed these on any place that has a harvest logo. So that way, every game's a little bit different. Now, uh, every time that this area is harvested here in this uh, province, uh, you would get a grain and so forth down the board. Next, we're gonna give both players two grain and two Bushido each as starting resources. Now we're going to figure out starting order. So I've got the order trackers and it's a starting random, starting random. So blue is going to go first this game, or the first round at least, and it's going to do clock eyes around the board. Um, after that, the rounds are at the end of the era, the round order is taken by points. We'll get there eventually. Last thing we need to do is take the destiny cards, which have territories on them. I will explain that in the scoring portion a little bit later on on how that works and why these are important but each player gets three of them two three and you are good to go a game is divided into three eras with two rounds and two phases to each round each round is basically the same you have the first round where you're going to be placing out your orders first, and then you're going to be revealing them. In the first round, you're going to reveal from the south to the north, and then the second round, you're going to reveal from the north to the south. In the first round, you're going to pick one card, you know, flip it upright. And then what I like to do is just set them on the board here so everybody can see 
exactly how many cards are here. Again, that comes in handy for scoring. And then you're going to set these guys aside once those are revealed. Now in a two-player game, you're going to take an extra one of those. I'm going to set those right there. And you're going to reveal an extra one. And that's going to sit out as well. Just to bring in more scoring options at the end of the game. Again, that will come in later when we're scoring and getting ready. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to plan. Planning is where we take care of, we take our action tokens here. Each one of these is a little different. And I'm going to explain those to you. The biggest thing is, is once you place this in the first round, you don't get it back until the end of the era. So we're going to place... In a two-player game, we're going to place four of these guys, which we're playing two, so we're going to place four down. The first thing we can do is we can, uh, this is a recruit action. So you're going to take one of your armies from your dish, and you're going to put it out in the capital of a province in the resolution phase. You can also spend one grain to recruit a second guy to a capital. Now... If you've built a castle, you can build your armies at your castles as well. Next thing we can do is we got to move three. We got to move two plus a grain, which can become a three. Move two, or you can spend a grain to move. Uh, Move two armies by ship across the coast. So like if you have your guys here and you want to jump ship and you want to go over here, you can with two guys. But you got to spend one of your grain to do that. You have your attack. You get one attack for free. You can spend a Bushido to do an attack again. You have a harvest. Anywhere you got guys sitting in the harvest in that territory or region, you can pick up all the... All of them that you have people in. And last, we have Castle. You can either remove two of your guys from a province in this region and put down one of your castles. That castle is worth two strength in determining uh, who has control of a province. Or you can choose, if you've already got a castle in this region, you can choose to add an army to it. So we're just going to move this aside. And I'm going to run through, and we're just going to lay out four of these. So we'll go one. These are color-coded, so these four areas go into here, these three go into here, these two here, and these three there. And you're going to take turns, and it doesn't matter where you put these down. There. Last one. And we'll go down here. So I did not specifically choose good actions. I just laid them out. When you put out your piece, you can these little gray icons here to the side are neutral actions that when you place them down, you can take them immediately. So I could move a troop to a different one on that one. I could recruit an army for free right there and set it in the capital if I so desired when I got there. This helps get a few more actions on the board and get things moving rather than just by your chips. Now, we're ready for the resolution phase. So we're going to start right here. And blue would take their actions. Then green. Then blue. Green. Green. Blue. Green. Blue. So now that that is done, we're going to go on to the second order. So this time, we're going to be putting down on either any open location or on top of one of your actions you've already done. And again, you're going to be able to take that. Now, if I wanted to take this spot and do that, I for the first time, I would have to pay one. If that was the second one, I would have to pay two. Bushido to do that. So we're going to just go down and we're going to place out our actions right here. There's that. We'll go there. We'll go there. 
Uh, we'll pop that there. What is that? One, two, three. Uh, we're going to pop that in there. And we're going to pop that right there. Two, three, four. One, two, three. And we'll say down here. So now this time, we're going to reveal our actions from the north side, taking our actions as we go, all the way down in order this way. It doesn't matter what order you lay them out in, but you have to start in the resolution phase on the second turn or second round from the north to the south. And we're gonna just flip them all over, taking our actions as we go through here, changing the course of the game as we do. And sometimes your actions may be null and void at that point. But that's why this is action programming and I really enjoyed it in the play that we got so far. Next, we're going to have an end of era. So any territory, first thing you're going to do, any territory where you have control strength. Now, what's that? what that might or strength means is that you outnumber, I'm just going to use this, take one guy away here. Or we'll just move these over here and this guy here. So any territory that, and we'll set this example up too. So now we're going to move on to the end of, ter end of era phase. This is really easy as well. So first thing you're going to do is you are going to harvest any territory that you have control of. And what that means is you have more might in that territory. Might breaks down to army strength, simple army strength math. So I have two guys, you have one. I have greater strength. Green has one. I have none, or blue has none. Yeah, I played blue. Um, blue has none. So green gets a green. And then in this one where it's contested, where we've got one and one, then neither one of us gets it. Now, in a cast area where I have a castle, that castle counts as two strength or might and is accounted for. Next thing you're going to do is any territory that you have more strength or might than your opponent, you are going to move up a level in those regions. So same thing, uh, we'll just say here in the green territory, I have two in this region, so I control, or blue controls one, and green controls one as well. So we're both going to go up there. Now in this one, neither one of us controls, so we don't go anywhere. And I haven't done a full board, but most of the time somebody's gonna get a few territories more than the other, because they went all into it. Also, when counting the uh, influence tracks, for every castle you have in a region, you go up one extra level as well. Where this matters at the end of the game, is you're going to get scoring based on the level you're at. So I'll leave you these here. So right now in the green, we have a one, level one, which is times one or one level times the number of cards. So this is one times one. So it'd be, at the end of the game, it'd be one extra point. In this case, I'm at four. So it's my multiplier is three. So it'd be three times one would be three extra points. Now, the more cards and the higher you get, the higher your multiplier and all that goes. So you're when you're flipping those destiny cards, you are trying to affect your influence in those areas to greater advantage for what you already have. Next is the regional bonuses. As you can see right here, each region has a big number and a little number placed next to it. If you 
control the most provinces provinces in this territory or this region so in this case the green region teal whatever color it is you would get first place gets three points and then whoever has the second most gets one point and those are scored immediately at the end of every era any territory with a little shrine that you control across the board gets you one extra point at the end of the era after that everybody picks up picks up their own uh, order tokens sets them to the side and lastly we deal up new to a new destiny card so everybody gets back up to three and lastly we're going to see who has whoever is in last place then gets moved up to the or, top of the order whoever comes next goes in two all the way up to the front till the first person who is ever in the lead points wise at the end of the era is the last person for the next era. The end of game is really simple. For every three extra resources you have that you did not spend, you get one extra point for the end of the game. Then you're going to add in your multipliers or your influence in each region and whoever has the most points wins the game. All right, those are the rules for Small Samurai Empires. I really enjoy this one. Uh, the one play I've got it with my wife, it was a very good decision. I'm curious to see how it plays at four and even possibly that fifth. And there's even a solo mode, so I will probably be checking that one out. Thank you very much for watching. Leave a comment down below if you liked it and if it helped you. And we will talk to you next time. All right, bye. If you like what you just saw, please support us by hitting that like button and subscribing to our channel for more great gaming content.